Well, since the focus on image quality was all around the image viewer area, what's that toolbar underneath it got in it? Well, going from left to right, the first icon we see is the color and audio enhancements. So we've got balance color, match color, show color board, enhance audio, show audio enhancements, and then on the next menu, which is the speed menu, we've got all of the speed adjustments for the clip. And you can see there, we're going to talk about more about these menus when we come to the, the relevant sections in the timeline. The next icon that we see across there is our effects, and the effects palette will slide in from the right on the timeline, uh, allow you to choose the categories, and you'll see there that the categories are remarkably similar to the, what they were in Final Cut Pro 7, but we have the addition of live previews. We'll talk more about that later in the presentation as well. The next ones, while we're not completely sure, but we presume that these open the iPhoto or perhaps optionally the Aperture Library if you have one. The next would be your iTunes Library. And remember, of course, that with iPhoto and iTunes, you can have multiple libraries on your system. So you can have a library that is your production music and a library that is your personal music and keep them separate that way. It seems very likely that the next menu item is going to be for transitions. Titles, so apparently we can do titles in Final Cut Pro 10. We'll talk more about titles uh, coming up. This would appear to be the generators icon, so this will open up the generators. And I would expect titles, generators, it, transitions, and effects to all open in that section to the right of the timeline. And this one appears, since it's the combination of the transition and the title icons, would be the animated titles. And we saw one example of the animated titles in the in the uh, Super Meat presentation during only during the playthrough of the actual piece and I'll show you an example of that towards the end of the presentation and the info icon opens up the effects board we saw that briefly as the color board but that's also the area where all of the effects are done well that really brings us away from the, the first point which is the pristine image quality and moves us into the organizational aspects of Final Cut Pro 10 and of course this section is the section that I just love because organization in Final Cut Pro 10 is metadata. Uh, I've been talking metadata for years. It's the foundation of my company's software products. And, and back in August, when I, uh, August 2010, when I was looking at what uh, Apple should do with Final Cut Pro 10, I said, use more metadata-based workflows. And uh, I was kind of a little facetious at the time because I didn't expect that to be the case. But boy, was I wrong because the entirety a Final Cut Pro 10 is based on metadata. Um, all organization is metadata based. You don't get any choice. Uh, shot detection is a metadata uh, format that gives us the format date, source, time code, and everything from the source. Uh, we can add keywords. We, people in shot detection is, in, is derived metadata out of that source. Um, the keywords. Keywords replace bins. Now this is something, and, and they're kind of like subclipping. So this is something you need to prepare mentally for, is that the keywords replace your bins. There is no fixed bin structure as we want, as we used to have. And I'm going to talk a bit more about that in a moment. And then of course, range-based keywords replace subclips. And smart collections are something that we just haven't had in Final Cut Pro before. But if you think a, a smart album in iPhoto or a smart a smart album in iTunes where you can set up the, the parameters th themselves and then every clip that matches those parameters comes up. 